everyone. Before we start today's video, I just want to remind you all that today is the final day you can get the kink bundle, which is an exclusive collection of 16 different classes, workbooks, workshops, journal prompts, and more put together by a group of amazing educators. Again, like I said, this is only available until midnight tonight, Tuesday, August 23rd. And I know you all are going to want to make sure you check this out because it has so many amazing classes, a lot of which I've already talked about. But for today's purposes, very relevantly, there is a class on spanking as well as a femdom class, everything you need to start your BDSM journey if you're new and things if you're experienced. I am also contributing my own exclusive class on anal sex and anal training. It's only in this bundle, so if you miss it, you will miss this class. Be sure to check it out. A link is in the description. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. Hello everyone! My name is Evie Lupine. Welcome back to my channel and today I have another video for you all. Today we are going to be talking about spanking, but probably not in the way that you're assuming. A couple of weeks ago I had an opportunity to take my first ever class about spanking and I know, I know, how can I call myself a kink educator if I don't already know how to spank someone? And maybe we'll talk about this at some point, but actually because spanking is considered Considered a basic and like newbie beginner skill, it's actually relatively hard to find classes about it. But the class I was able to take was taught by a professional disciplinarian named Miss Chris. They are very well known both in the BDSM and in the Spanko communities, and they have been teaching more or less this same class for almost 15 teen years. They are the go-to person whenever a daytime talk show or a publication wants to have a piece on spanking, be that to spice things up in the bedroom or for other reasons we'll talk about in a moment. And because she talked about the fact that she was featured in just all sorts of media during the class, naturally afterwards I was curious, what were those appearances like? What did they talk about? And when I started searching on YouTube, it all led in one direction spanking therapy. There is a quite popular clip on the show The Doctors on their YouTube channel that features Miss Chris talking about spanking therapy. In that clip, she shares kind of the basics of what spanking is and says it's really good for stress relief and guilt relief. It also helps people get to their goals and also just generally is used to help people be better and reach their objectives. There's kind of a hilarious but also cringe inducing scene in which the doctors all go up at various points and try out spanking including one older, very horny doctor that seems to want to co-top the entire time. But once they get through all of that, they eventually decide, okay, I can see why this would be enjoyable. I can see the benefit from it maybe if someone wants to give it a go. But what about if people go too far? What about if they were spanked as a child and have negative memories associated with that? And Miss Chris responds that, of course, she would never do specifically spanking therapy with someone that had that background or was worried about going too far without the guidance of either a doctor or a therapist. It's seen as more of part of a holistic healthcare practice as opposed to a replacement for therapy, which is generally something that I agree with. However, this is just one clip on YouTube talking about spanking therapy, and surprisingly, there's a lot, like more than I expected. And the most famous one is, of course, guess in the comments below what you think it is before I say it. It's BuzzFeed. Of course it's from BuzzFeed. There was no other possibility here. BuzzFeed has a clip where they do spanking therapy and it has over a million views. The setup for this one is different from the first one that Miss Chris was in. This video instead has two different BuzzFeed employees that volunteer or are possibly voluntold to try out spanking therapy. One of them has never been spanked before in any context and the other one was habitually spanked as a child. So maybe not the best starting point for trying out spanking therapy, but we'll, we'll get to that when we get to that. And 
this one starts out also with a different approach when it comes to the disciplinarians because the one that is mostly focused on here there are two in the video but the one that is the main focus is a semi-anonymous person that goes by miss kane and they start out almost instantly by saying it's not bdsm it's like the spankings you would get from your mother which makes me a little bit concerned because again one of the participants here does have a childhood history of spanking they probably don't have very fond memories of but it doesn't stop there she also says that spanking is trauma or it's like trauma but it's good i'm honestly not really sure what she means by the phrase she uses here but uh yeah i'm just not sure i agree with that either and then the reaction she gives when she hears that it's the first person's first time ever being spanked it's not like oh wow thank you for telling me let's talk about this a little bit more before we get into it and make sure you're comfortable no 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 that's not it at all she goes like in a pretty exasperated tone all right well better late than never and just I know she said it's not BDSM, but I can only interpret this through a BDSM lens and who oh, the thought of overhearing a dom say that to someone who says it's their first time ever doing a BDSM scene would raise so many red flags. But I will say by the end of the experience, the participants do say that they enjoy it. They at least the next day, have positive feelings about it and they thought it helped them with their sugar problem as well as with managing their time at work. And so, you know, I'm not gonna yuck anyone's yum. If they had a good time, that's what really matters. However, I do still have some thoughts about it. And of course I do because I am making a whole YouTube video about this. So what do I think about spanking therapy? What do I think about it as a term? as well as a practice because this is being so it seems sold primarily to vanilla people as like an innovative new solution to all of their problems and i want to know what the science has to say about that and when it comes to childhood spankings we have a lot of research we have decades and decades and decades of papers and meta-analyses that all say the same thing Spanking your child is a very bad idea. It leads to more behavior problems. It leads to mental health issues that can persist into adulthood, not to mention all of the trauma that goes along with that. And just, there's not a good reason to do it. Spanking your child is a bad idea. However, we are talking about adults here. Adults that have fully developed brains, have more control over the situation and can presumably consent to it happening. And I did look into the research, but it is quite sparse. Now, as someone that does BDSM, I can intuit why spanking might be beneficial. It probably feels good physically. And of course, there is also the fact that even as an adult, it can be a positive thing to have an authority figure in your life that you are accountable to, that can help you with your goals and just kind of be there to inspire you to stay on the right path. There's the release of all these wonderful neurotransmitters that can happen as part of a BDSM scene that can make you feel really good, both in the moment and then for several days afterwards. We also have surveys that indicate that one of the primary reasons for participation in BDSM outside of sexual ones would be for stress relief. So just going off of anecdotal evidence, it does seem like there is some pretty strong evidence towards spanking therapy being a good thing that might actually help people. However, because these are all the reactions of a kinky person that doesn't necessarily map onto what a vanilla or non kinky person might experience because I would argue if you are someone who is kinky, you are more likely to respond to that stimulus in a positive way. And like, could you even imagine what would happen if like everyone on the planet had like the latent ability to enjoy BDSM? Like we know from surveys that like, 
1% of people actually participate in BDSM clubs like ever at all, like ever go to a party. And so if we did have this underlying ability to just like enjoy BDSM and enjoy pain on a really mass scale, I expect that number to be way bigger and especially after the craze of Fifty Shades of Grey where like everyone and their mom and their aunt and their grandmother was all trying BDSM for the first time. Like I would have expected more people to stick with it after that if it had really been this like magical secret thing that had been unlocked, you know? Like that's just sort of what I think it is. So we can't necessarily map on what a kinky person's reaction to a stimulus would be and then say the same thing would happen for a vanilla person. But when I was looking into the research, there's just nothing for adult spanking. I mean like literally nothing. I tried so hard and I'm good at research, okay? I know what to look for. And I looked up every possible combination of like, adult spanking therapy, adult spanking benefits, spanking in adulthood. Like I tried every little different thing I could think of. And there is literally no research about this. Nothing that shows that it reduces stress or gets rid of guilty feelings or helps you with your goals or just anything at all. So I think that all of the statements that are being made about the benefits of spanking therapy are being made more from anecdote and extrapolation than actual evidence. And that definitely should weight our opinion about this. I was able to find one study which did suggest that doing BDSM scenes can create pleasurable feelings for people, but that was done with BDSM couples that already do BDSM. It's not like a random survey of the population where we like pair up people and then make them try BDSM together. That sounds like a funny but terrible idea, but that's not what the study was. And again, we can't extrapolate that because something is good for people who do BDSM, it's going to work for the general population. And can I just say for the record that I think the claim, this isn't BDSM is just bullshit. Like, okay, if it's not BDSM, then what is it? Like consensual abuse? <laughs> what are you gonna call this instead? And to me, that mentality just reeks of this notion of like, oh no, no, we're not like those nasty perverts over there. What we do is good and wholesome and helps people unlike those sex freaks doing their weird BDSM. And it's like being associated with BDSM isn't a bad thing unless you decide to make it a bad thing. Because in my mind, I actually think it's more of a red flag that it's being separated from BDSM in this way because when it is a BDSM practice, there is this cultural expectation for it being a kink activity that there will be negotiation, that it involves revocable informed consent, that there will be aftercare, that there will be safe words. And when it's not BDSM, you don't necessarily have the guarantee or the expectation of any of that. Now, I'm not gonna say that people should never do spanking therapy, but I would be cautious about doing it because the quality of people that are offering spanking therapy does vary and their approach to it does also vary. And if you are trying to do this with a partner, they should probably know about actual spanking technique because that is probably not a skill they're necessarily going to have unless they are a BDSM person themselves and they've done spanking in that context. I do agree with Miss Chris when she says that spanking is something in a therapeutic way that should be done with the knowledge of a doctor or a therapist. It's not meant to be a standalone thing. It's meant to be an adjunct to other therapeutic or other helpful practice that you might be engaging in. And that's why I'm not a fan of the term spanking therapy. I think it puts the emphasis on it being a type of therapy in the way that people say like hypnotherapy, as opposed to it being a type of spanking. That's why I prefer the term therapeutic spanking, which I think, I know it's subtle, but I think it does shift mentally the focus from it being a type of therapy that might stand alone to it simply being another type of spanking instead. And I think that's a more reasonable approach. And I do think if you are using the term 
spanking therapy, you can't assume that the only people who are going to be doing it are people that are kinky in the same way that people who do hypnotherapy are not always people that have a fetish for hypnosis or people that do fire cupping are not all people that do fire play as a kink. Like there are vanilla people who are going to want to do this and I don't want to oversell the claims that some people are making about spanking therapy. And I think if you are going into it with this mentality of like, oh, this is gonna solve all my problems. This is gonna help me with my sugar and my eating habits and help me quit smoking and just like all this other stuff. No, 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 no. I really recommend just treating it the same way you would any other kind of like pop psychology advice. Take it with a huge grain of salt. I think if you are more measured in the way that you approach spanking therapy, you're gonna get better results. I think if you go about it thinking, okay, this is gonna give me temporary stress relief. This is going to help me for today just feel a little bit better and a little bit recentered. Like that is much more realistic and it's what most people experience when they do BDSM. Now, on that note, am I like kind of worried about vanilla people picking up spanking? Like, uh, like the part about it that worries me is people using this to process childhood trauma without necessarily having the proper skill set or support network to actually be able to do that. And I don't want to encourage people to like re-traumatize themselves or like relive their trauma in a way that they're not really prepared for. Like that seems really horrible, but I'm not like protective of like spanking as like, oh, this is like this kinky thing and it has to be called BDSM. <laughs> like, I just don't want people to like denigrate BDSM while they're saying that spanking is different from it. That's my only real problem. Like, cause spankos, a lot of them consider themselves to be separate from BDSM, but they do spanking, which BDSM people consider to be a BDSM activity. So again, as long as people are not going like, oh my God, mm, nasty BDSM over there. Like as long as they're not doing that, like huh, I don't really get it, but I guess if you wanna say that your spanking is for therapy reasons and not for like, doing kinky stuff like, okay, I'm not gonna be able to stop you and I'm not gonna try and fight that fight, I guess. So, you know, my, my problem with it is really just like overstating claims about what it can do for people and then just making it out to be something it's not and maybe like a little bit of an issue with the terminology around it. But if people get a benefit from spanking, if it does happen to help them with their habits or with meeting their goals or with just feeling better in some way, I really think that's great. And if you are someone who does spanking therapy and it helps you that much, you're probably kinky and you might wanna look into having a regular BDSM relationship or a dom or something like that because that would be a sign for me that like, oh, if you're really getting something out of this, it might be not just vanilla, that's that's my opinion on it. But all that being said, I would love to know what you all think about the term spanking therapy, the videos, the Buzzfeed video, the one with Miss Chris, like where do you see spanking falling into the whole spectrum between like vanilla and BDSM? I would love to know any and all of your thoughts in a comment down below. I just like, found this to be really fascinating because like how many times have you heard like a BDSM thing like suddenly become a type of therapy? Like does that happen very often? Cause I don't feel like it does. Maybe I'm missing something. Let me know if I am again in a comment down below. If you did enjoy this and you wanna see more from me, I do make videos twice a week about all sorts of kink and BDSM related topics. So please go ahead and subscribe. And if you really enjoy this video, if you wanna support what I do, the best way you can do that is with Patreon. A link to that will be down below. If you do already support over there, thank you so, so much. It means the absolute world to me. And until I see you all next time, I hope you have a great yesterday and a great rest of your week. Bye-bye.